Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Speak with Scoundrel. This is your opportunity to send me a question and ask me something you're struggling with or there's a challenge in your life that you want my advice on. And uh, I will read it, select your, if I select your comment, I'll uh, read it and make a video just like this. So if you do have a question you'd like to ask me, uh, send me an email. Uh, info at the sophisticated scoundrel.com and send me a nice one pager giving you enough information to give me some context to your situation and I will answer in a video just like this one. All right, let's get into today's uh, question. And actually, this one came from one of my coaching clients that I thought would be a really great one to share because. Uh, this is one I see pretty often, and so I think this could be very valuable to a lot of you guys out there who struggle with the same thing that one of my clients uh, struggles with. So he says, hey, uh, coach, I'm at my meet and greet for my fraternity, and I'm struggling to start conversations and keep it going. I'm too in my own head and can't be present at the moment. And uh, I, even with the brothers that I rushed with as well, I'm struggling, I, the, uh, oh, that I rushed with, meaning uh, joined the fraternity with, I'm struggling with conversation. And you know, guys, this is something that so many guys reach out to me about. They don't know how to keep a conversation going. And I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I used to be in the same boat. Granted, this was a long time ago, I would say, you know, high school, junior high, high school, even a little bit into college, um, I would freeze up. And the biggest reason for that freeze up came because I was insecure about my own self, right? I didn't think what I had to say, anybody would want to hear it. And I was also worried that I didn't want to get into a disagreement with somebody. I was very, um, what's the word? confrontationally averse. I did not want to get in confrontations with people because I didn't know how to defend myself if a confrontation were to come up because I had very low self-esteem or I, I was very insecure about those types of things. So if this sounds like something that you're dealing with, a lot of it's how to get out of it. Well, the easy way is just to get out there and practice, okay? That is you know, the most basic fundamental advice I can give you is to go out there and practice. Now that sounds kind of generic. So when I say get out there and practice, let me give you something more concrete because <laughs> that's that, that doesn't really help you. Um, practicing meaning the best thing that you can do to get better at conversations is to know how to ask questions because honestly, this allows the other person to talk so you don't really need to talk much, okay? So it's kind of a weird little hack. But if you get good at asking questions, this allows you to really dig in and feel like you're having an engaging conversation, which you are, it's not fake by any means, but it allows you to let them open up and they'll feel like, wow, this guy's a really good conversationalist, but it's simply because you're asking good questions. So. Let me give you an example. If I was to meet a stranger on the street, I like to ask questions that are related to the context. So just the other day, as a matter of fact, um, I was standing in line at the grocery store and I just saw some guy was looking at liquor. So I said, hey man, are you a big, are you a big uh, liquor fan? So I'm using that context to ask if they like a certain thing. Now, he said, yeah, he, he was. And so a lot of you guys might think, okay, now what do I do? <laughs> he said, yes, okay. So then you wanna take that, if he says yes, then you wanna take that one step further. So, hey, well, what kind of, what are you into? What's your favorite, what's your go-to type of liquor? So he told me like bourbon, okay, great. Now it takes it another step, right? Now he's told me he likes bourbon. So then you can contribute a little bit to the conversation. Cause I told him, oh, the other day I picked up such and such bourbon, which is true. I told him what I picked up the other day. So once you do that, then you can say, have you ever had that one? So again, you're always tagging on a question to what they say, right? Now, if he says, no, I'm not a big drinker, then you could simply say, well, hey, if you're not a big drinker, but you're open to drinking, I would recommend trying this stuff. It's really good. 
Um, and that actually happened another day where a guy, again, same place at the grocery store in a liquor aisle, he was trying to find a bourbon. And I said, hey, what are you into? Sweeter stuff or more drier stuff? And I said, hey, try this one. And he ended up do it, buying. He said, hey, man, thanks for the recommendation. I appreciate it. So questions, questions, questions. That's how you initialize a conversation. It's going to be bumpy at first. I'm not going to say you're going to be Mr. Smooth Operator the, as the moment you start asking a question, but that's a great go-to thing is to ask questions. Make it about them, okay? Now, on the flip side, that's the, that's the band-aid, I like to call it, of how to uh, get better at conversing with people and holding conversations. Now, the other side, which may take a little bit more work, is you have to do a more inner work and you have to be proud of yourself. Because when you're proud of yourself, you're comfortable with yourself. And when you're comfortable, you're not in your head wondering if someone is gonna like you or what they're gonna think of you because you really don't care. And I don't mean that in a rude sense. I mean, you're so comfortable with yourself and you're proud of yourself that, hey, if someone doesn't really like you, that's okay. Um, and so what I would suggest to you is writing down things that you like about yourself. Now don't tell me there's nothing that you like about yourself, that's bullshit. It can be the most mundane things. I make a sick peanut butter sandwich, <laughs> or I'm really good at taking naps. Doesn't matter, think outside the box here and write down things that you can look at and be proud of. Because when you have a list of things like, you know what, you know, I'm, I'm really good at playing video games, or I'm really good at, uh, driving or I'm really good at finding the best burger spots in town. That's something that you have that you can now own. You can claim that. It's something to feel good about. You have to find things in your life that you can be proud of and feel really good about. And of course, again, like I said, it's not going to be easy at first. But when you make out this list of things that you can be proud about, you need to get that in your head. You need to tell yourself a new story. So you have to look at this every single day and say, hey, I'm good at making a burger, I'm good at making peanut butter sandwiches, I'm really good at driving, or I'm, I know a lot about cars, um, you know, I'm good at uh, taking naps. Find something that you can be proud of uh, because that's gonna build, like I said, that resiliency because when you have, when you like yourself, it doesn't really matter so much if other people like you. Of course, yeah, there's gonna be some times where you, I hope this person really likes me or I hope, you know, they think I'm cool, but if they don't, again, you have something to be proud of that you can just go off and be, you know, whether or not that person is in your life, uh, it doesn't bother you so, so much. Third, this is a bonus round. Um, and this is kind of a, again, a counterintuitive one, but do this. Allow people to not like you. That sounds weird, right? Allow, give people an opportunity to not like you. So don't worry, so don't be in your head about what you say. If they don't like you, allow them to not like you. That's okay, not everyone has to be uh, your best friend or to like you. Uh, and that might happen, to be honest with you. There are people who don't like me and I have to be comfortable with that. But you know, the funny thing is, is that when you can own that and allow them to not like you, you kind of actually become more likable. It's a weird, a counterintuitive thing, but if someone doesn't like me and I'm like, hey, okay, man, you don't like me, I get that. I totally see that, man. That's, that's, hey, I get it, man. I'm a, I'm a jerk. I'm a dick. <laughs> they almost like, okay, you know, this guy's not so bad because he's self-aware enough, right? When you're with someone who admits something and is self-aware, you kind of like your tension goes down. That animosity starts to fade away a bit. So let people uh, not like you and if they don't like a certain thing about you maybe it's true man and that's okay <laughs> when you allow yourself to be unlikable you're more flexible to maybe change it up a bit and when you allow other people to not to like you it allows them to think hey this guy's human he realizes he's not likable and they just might end up turning that opinion into respecting you at least so if you struggle with keeping a conversation going try these things out like I said you have that little quick band-aid of just getting out there and forcing yourself to do it, which does work. And I even still practice this, practice this to this day. I go out and whenever I go, out, I try to make conversation with as many people as I can. Even Coach Jason is out there doing this stuff. 
because it's a very valuable skill and I like to get better and better at it. Or there's the more deeper motivation way of looking inside yourself, find what you're ashamed about yourself and then list up the things that you're proud about yourself that you can reinforce that, hey, you're not that bad. Whether someone likes you or not, it's, not, it's okay because you got valuable things. You have some redeeming qualities about yourself. Live with those things, be proud of those things so that when you, you know, are out and about, you're not so worried about whether someone will like you or not. Okay, so um, if you guys have any questions, again, this is your opportunity to speak with Scoundrel, Coach Jason here, info at thesophisticatedscoundrel.com. Send me an email with your question. I'd love to answer it. Uh, don't be shy. Uh, if you haven't already, I invite you to subscribe. I put videos out every week. And if you are looking to uh, learn how to attract feminine women into your life, I have a free guide. Download that below. Uh, and if you'd like some coaching one-on-one, -on -one, I also have links down below that you can book a session with me. All right, that's it for this video. I'm gonna take a little sip of my uh, black Manhattan and we'll talk to you soon. Cheers.